uh, demonstrating. I'm hoping to do it in just 30 minutes straight. Uh, lots of things to show you. Um, this is done in acrylics and I've got acrylic ink and acrylic paint. So this is the main colour, process of magenta. I've got that all over the bottom here. You know, I, done, I did that already there. I'll talk about it in a minute. So that's the background colour. I'm also using Amsterdam Carmine, which is a beautiful, strong, more ready pink. Then I've got Naples Yellow, Turquoise, White. These are all Amsterdam. You can get all of these at the SAA. I really like this Amsterdam series because that's a heavy body paint. And this is my secret to this really bright painting is these. So I've got fluorescent pink and fluorescent orange. That is what gives it that zing and it's very bright. Um, but I do mix them with other paints as well. Again, you can get these from the SAA. Great paints. I love them. Um, the inspiration came from Soraya French when I saw her at Patchings last year and she'd been using fluorescent pink in her painting. I just adored it and I thought, yes, I want to have a go at that. So that's why, um, where the inspiration came from. So I'm going to put this aside. This is the paper I've used. It's SAA Practice Watercolour Paper, rough surface. I really like watercolour paper for um, painting with acrylics because I really like the texture of the rough surface. Now I have, as you can see, already prepared the surface. I've covered it in magenta. But I've also, if I bring it up to the camera so you can see, I've also put some tissue paper in there. Hopefully you can see that bit of texture there. It will show up more later when I start adding paint. Um, so, I'm going to make a start. I'm using two brushes. They're both flat brushes, the SAA acrylic brushes. This is, um, I'm not sure what number this is, probably about a 16 or something like that and that's an 8. So I'm going to start with this big brush and that's what I use to put all this pink on. Uh, now what I want to do is scrumble the surface. By scrumbling it means that you put really um, light paint on dark or dark paint on light and really dry so get rid of the excess paint like this on a paper towel so that when it comes off you get the colour underneath showing through so excuse me a minute just going to sit down to make this easier so I've got the paints in the palette here already out and I'm just going to add some white so get rid of that because I want the idea of the sun shining on here now you for scrambling, you can put lots of layers on. This is why I like the watercolour paper. Can you see that texture coming through? It's really rather lovely. I'm going to add some of that fluorescent pink. It's got a bit of white in it at the moment. So it's a bit lighter. And over here. And I'm going to keep building these layers up. Now I have to be careful because if that paint is wet and I add the dry brush, it will still blend with the paint. So you need to be patient and do layers at a time. If any of my students are watching, they will be completely au fait with this technique because we've been doing it recently. So I'm just going to get a little bit of that carmine. This is the Amsterdam colour and it's going lovely texture there there it's mixing with the wet paint so i need to be patient and go back to it in a, a short while but it's quite warm in here i've got the radiator on because it's so cold outside a miserable day outside i'm hoping this will brighten up your evening <laughs> in more ways than one so this is the fluorescent pink going on with a little bit of carmine in there as well and a bit more white here Again, it's blending. I don't really want that. I want it to be scrumbled on top of there. I want the texture coming through, so I will go back to it in a bit. I'm using the heavy, heavy body paint because, again, that's drier and will work better than, um, you know, the, the normal kind of consistency of paint. As I say, the Amsterdam paints are really good for that. So I am going to go back to that in a minute. As I say, it's starting to dry up a bit. 
I'm going to use the System 3 to just get a little bit of a hill here. And then I'm going to start putting the foreground colours in here. Now this is where you will see the tissue showing through. So if I put this fluorescent pink across here, can you see that texture? If I bring it closer to you, you'll be able to see it better. Look at that. The tissue is showing up really, really nice. So this is a kind of abstract way of painting, semi-abstract really. I've got some Naples yellow now, I love Naples yellow, it's a really nice colour and again you can really see that texture coming through. And I can go over this, you know, I can use different colours. I'm going to use the luminous pink again, coming through here, and luminous orange, why not? So look at that, fantastic. So it's really showing that texture up well. I'm going to put some across here as well. So the luminous pink, the luminous orange, mixing in. If it gets a bit too much, then put another colour over the top just to calm it down. And I'm varying my lights and dark, so I'm just going to put a bit of light on there. Because the tree is going to go in this corner here. It's going to be where this third meets this third. And a bit more of the pink there. That's now dry, so I can go over that. I'm going to go back to that whilst I can. So look how that's showing up over the white now, because it, this is the scrumbling at its best. So you can really see the textures, and you can see the colour coming out from underneath. So more, the more you do, the better really. You know, the more layers you put in for this technique, the best. So I'm going to add some white here. Maybe even a little bit of Naples yellow and white to warm it up a little bit. It's still a little bit wet there, that's why it's not working perfectly, not quite as well as I would like it to. And I want the idea is to have that light right in the middle, you know, kind of bringing you into the painting. So that's another layer. Again, I need it to dry before I can put the next layer on. So now I'm going to swap over to my number eight brush and I've got some lovely turquoise here. I just think this breaks up this pinkness. I mean, I, I love magenta, I love the colour pink, but it can get a bit too much if it's all over. So uh, I'm just adding a little bit of this turquoise to break it up. And the idea of, you know, maybe some trees, some bushes or whatever in the background. But I don't want too much, just a little bit, you know, of an idea. I'm going to add a little bit of white to make that lighter. Oh yeah, look at that, lovely, might add a bit there. That. And again, I want that to dry before I put the next layer. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this blue coming through the other side. So this is turquoise, the Amsterdam turquoise. Oops. And again, you know, if I'm going to scramble, I can scramble over the top of that, but I would let it dry first. Now I'm cleaning my brush, and this is very important for scrambling technique, is to dry your brush really thoroughly. All the way up the handle, because of the water, otherwise the water can go right down, and even, even though you have dried the brush, it gets wet again because of the water on the handle. So make sure it's nice and clean. I can't put anything over there yet because it's still wet, so I'm going to let it dry a little bit. I'm going to use some of the Naples yellow again across here. Oh yes, that's dry enough to do that, that's great. And bring it down a little bit. Look at all these textures, that's what it's about. Colour and texture, my favourite things. And I'm just going to add a bit of light around here. If I show you the original, now I've got this light here, and if it's light there, and I have this dark tree against it, it really clashes with the contrast of um, dark and light, so it makes it really stand out more. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. 
bit of the oh luminous orange look at that gorgeous <laughs> I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and I know some of you might be thinking oh my goodness what is she doing but you know we all like different things and you can still learn things from this lesson even if it's not really your cup of tea they to me they really um you know I just love them they, they make you, you know they cheer you up all these bright colors I think especially on a day like this I don't know about anyone else but it's been absolutely horrible here near Manchester absolutely dreadful weather okay and keep going with this with these textures so a bit more pink on here this is now dry it's dried really quickly actually which is great a little bit of blue now because I've put that blue on the brush I now need to clean that that was a bit of a mistake really <laughs> so then that dry it off really well again all the way up the handle and now I can get some nice clean colour at least so a bit brighter along here And, you know, as you see, it, you just keep building this up, putting more and more in. So a bit of blue there. Not too much blue because, you know, I want the whole thing to be mainly pink. So the next thing is to add the tree. Now, ideally, I want that to be completely dry and it's not quite. So I did prepare one earlier. Um, <laughs> My class will laugh because I'm always saying this, but I, I'd love to have been a Blue Peter presenter. So I love saying that's one of my sayings. OK, so this is dry and now I'm going to add my tree. So those of you who've been watching my demonstrations this week will have seen my sketchbook. I do lots of sketches whenever I'm away or anywhere. I will take my sketchbook and uh, I even have one in the car so I can just do a quick scribble if I'm waiting for something or whatever. Um, and this was taken in January 2019. It was um, at New Year at Malham Cove in Yorkshire, one of my favourite places. And this is one of my favourite trees ever. I absolutely love this tree. It stands out. It's on its own at the top of the limestone pavement. And, of course, it's very useful for adding to a painting. So it's slightly different to the one in the original painting. This was actually inspired by one down in Cornwall. It's my sister-in-law's favourite tree, that one. Um, but this is mine from Malham. So I'm going to use ink now. I'm going to use the uh, De La Rowney FW acrylic ink. Black, white and a bit of turquoise. So I've already put them in a palette. I need this handy so that I can see... Oh, sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. Um, <laughs> so I need that handy so that I can see what I'm doing. And I've got this lovely brush. This is the SAA Imitation Sable. I can use it with acrylic ink as long as I clean it straight away afterwards. It's really important to do that because acrylic will dry even acrylic ink. So I'm now going to get the ink and I'm going to add a bit of a line across here. So the idea is to have a bit of a, an idea of some land here. So I'm going to add some water to it. And can you see how we can see the colours coming through? This is what I love about acrylic ink used with acrylic paint. Look, it mixes really nicely like this, but it also has a bit of a translucency to it. And once it dries, it's completely um, permanent, which watercolour isn't. So I really, and I love water medium, wet medium, just love. Um, what, what happens with it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of turquoise ink here now. I'm doing it on the side so that this will dribble down a little bit more along here. I want more where the tree is so I'm putting more of this black ink here. If you feel black's too strong you could use something like sepia or you know indigo would be nice actually on this. And I'm helping it to dribble 
down. I'm just going to do that a bit. There we go. Now another way to help it is to use a water spray and if I just do that you'll be able to see, oh look at that, exciting. Can you see how it's spreading out? I really love that. I'm just going to dab that off a bit there. Now what I want to have here is using a barbecue stick and I'm just going to get the idea of some grasses here. So I've got some lovely turquoise ones there and a few black ones here coming through. That's already drying up so I'm just going to add a little bit more ink so it will do its job. It needs to be nice and wet for this to work. Oh yes, look at that, lovely. So good textures there. I'm getting some white ones coming through where I'm scratching into the damper paint and so on. And I'll probably put a little bit more on there. But I don't want to lose that pink so I'm just going to there we go, going down like that. So I would let I would probably work a bit more on that um, coming across here. This is already dried actually. Amazing. And just peter out going down here. A little bit more of the dribble. So say the um, using the spray is a really great way of that happening. Can you see how the turquoise is coming into the black? Really, really lovely. So now I'm going to add the tree and I'm looking at my drawing and I'm going to add it in a third and a third roughly about here. Now what I love about this tree is it sort of curves round here. It comes out of the cracks almost in the uh, limestone pavement. It's a beautiful tree. And then I'm just looking at the shapes of these branches. I'm just bringing this up, the main branches doing like this and I've got one going the other direction. Now this is where a rigger is good or a detailer and I thought I was incredibly organised but for some reason I've forgotten to put my rigger out so I'm going to use this which is handy uh, to get these nice fine lines. Now obviously a rigger is better, the Matthew Palmer branch and um, oh, branch and something brush. Oh my goodness, I've forgot, forgotten what it's called. But that's really, really great for this. Um, I've told my students it's a really good rigger to start with because it really works easily. It's quite stiff. Uh, I think you might have just missed a special offer actually. Um, it was last week on Matthew Palmer's brushes. So, um, just keep going with this, putting the branches on. I love winter trees, they're, they're so interesting. They've got these fantastic uh, shapes, you know, and this is why I was saying to you, it's really important to observe trees before you start painting them, really look at them, sketch them, you know, get the idea of the branches and how they come out. How many, how many branches does it have? How many um, twigs on the end? You know, how thin are they? Where do they start? Uh, that sort of thing and just building that up now this is another thing that's really rather nice with ink if it's still wet when I do this hopefully then when I spray it it does very gently not too much just a little bit look at that fantastic and again on there. It's like magic. Now those of you who might have watched my textiles piece, I used expander print onto fabric. Uh, it's a textiles thing but it's, it's like puff paint and so when you heat it up it suddenly appears before your very eyes and I put a little video that I took way back in um, uh, 2016 and that's on Artist Emma Day's website so if you want to have a look at that you can always look later. A little bit more there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to risk that because it's already wet. If I add a bit more water it's just going to go mad. So. so there we go. So that's the tree and this has started to dry. It's not completely dry um, but the last thing I'm going to do is add some print. Those of you who know me know I love print um, and I often use wallpaper. This is my favourite wallpaper. I'm actually starting to run out of it so I'm re reusing this one again. Uh, it's got all these bubbles on but they're not too uniform. You've got smaller ones and larger ones. If you bring it up to 
this is it the camera you can see it more closely and I, I just love it it's perfect for this so I'm going to use my flat brush again and the the acrylic paint I'm going to use a bit of white paint flat brush is best not too thick you know get rid of the excess paint go across like this look you can see that because it was black underneath like that maybe add a little bit of pink to it or another color it doesn't have to just be one color like this and then place this where you want it to go ideally i would have left the ink to dry before doing this but i wasn't going to prepare yet a third piece there we go so that's not worked as well as i would like it to so i'm just going to put a bit more on here so i've got white and um turquoise this time and I'm just going to place that on here, press with my finger, I'm holding it down so it doesn't move too much and then that's a little bit better. Someone actually said um, something about my original piece, um, I love the way you've put that kind of confetti on <laughs> and I thought that was a lovely way of describing it. Um, basically this is how you put the confetti on, <laughs> just using this wallpaper. So you can also imprint with it, so this ink is still wet, so if I do this, it might lift off some of that ink too. Oh, it's got some white in there, like that, that was almost by accident. I could also add some of it to, excuse me, a new one, um, some of it to my uh, tree here if I want to. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ink to it on here. But again, need to be a bit careful with this because it can go a bit mad. I'm just going to wipe that bit off. It's too strong. And then again, just going to add a little bit of there on there and there. Just, you know, subtle. A little bit of subtle colour. Probably a bit too strong. So again, overprinting like that. And there we have it. I've managed to do it in less than 30 minutes. So I'm very proud of that. Um, it's not quite finished, but you know, I would I would work a bit harder on that. But